Well, in a lot of ways, the transition from LED to tungsten, or tungsten to LED rather, is like the transition from film to digital images, in that when it started, it wasn't very good. And it got better and better, and to the point where it got better then. And I think that's happening with LEDs. The first LEDs were absolutely appalling. Uh, they were green, they were magenta, they were just crap. They were really horrible. And there were all the jokes about NAB, where you would go to Chinatown in NAB, which Chinatown was the central hall down the back on the right-hand side where all the LED manufacturers were. And you would walk through it and they all had their LEDs pointing out at you, blinding you as you walked in, rather than lighting something. And it was kind of, I wonder if there are any two the same color. It seemed to be almost, we can make lights in any color you want, except correct tungsten or correct daylight. And we can show you all our lights. We make all of these lights. And you'd say, yeah, but they're all different colors. You know, can't you match them? Well, no, that's what LEDs do. And you, you fix it in post. Really? I don't think so. Uh, and so initially when I was using LEDs, I would always make sure that I would only use one manufacturer of LED. So that if it was going to be off in color, it would be consistently off and you could hopefully fix it. Um, then I discovered remote phosphor, which were the Cineo True Colors and the BBS Area 48s. And they work in a different way in that they, the LED isn't what lights something, it's a panel that's excited by the LEDs. And they're incredibly color accurate and they're brilliant. I love them. Um, but now LEDs have got better and better and better. And the latest generation of LEDs are actually really good. And not only are they color accurate, but they're just so bloody convenient to use. They're small, they pull no power. You can run quite a large soft light on a camera battery. And that was a real revelation for me two years ago when I first started using light panels then, uh, which had their own batteries clipped to them. And you'd go, now oh, the kicker there. And clunk, it's there. There's no cables to run. There's no, almost as soon as you've said it to your gaffer, it's there. And they've all got inbuilt the bicolor. It's like, you make it a bit warmer. Just chill it off a bit. Yeah, now just take it down a bit in level. Just there. And you've got perfect. Now those two years ago weren't perfect. Uh, there was a little bit of a green spike that showed up in the actress's dyed hair. Didn't show to the eye. It didn't show to the video assist. But when we came to grade it, all the kickers put a green tinge in her hair, the bleach or the blonde or whatever, it picked it up. And so I spent a couple of days doing secondary correction, just removing the green, just one shade of green. So it was you know, only a couple of days, but I'm happy now, only two years later, that I can avoid that completely. And I've got a whole bunch of LED lights on this film. I've got traditional heavy metal HMIs as well, but I've got tiny little battery powered LEDs this size from Aladdin. I've got other Aladdins that are about this size with integral batteries and they're as powerful as hell. And I'm doing some stuff with cars and bikes where I want lights inside. I've got some pipelines from BBS, which are narrow tubes, the most accurate color you can get. They're brilliant. I've got flat panels from Aladdin, which are two foot by one foot, but they're that thick. You know, you can stick them on a wall and literally just tape them on a wall. They're brilliant. Um, I've got Kinoflow soft lights, which are tunable with color and they're just the most accurate you can get. They're gorgeous. So it's the, the LEDs are totally changing the way that I shoot. Now we've got ones that are color accurate. You've got this whole playground of lights available to you that give tremendous light output that work on batteries that you can just stick all over the place that you don't have to worry about stands cables you can it's it's exciting as hell because you can just do stuff that 
you can go into an environment, I'm going to a country house for the next three weeks. We're shooting in long, narrow corridors. Now, normally, as someone goes past the door, I would put in a four bank kino, probably four foot four bank kino, just so there's a shaft of light as they go by the door, just to break it up and keep the corridor dark. You want that. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to tape kinos in places where, not kino, tape LEDs in places where, like there's a, in places that, I can't remember what they're called. It's almost a dado rail, um, but it obscures the camera view forward by that much. I can hide an LED behind that. I can be much more precise rather than the broad strokes of four banger through that door. I go, give me a little kick there. Give me a little kick there. Let's put a little back kicker in there. We can hide something in there. You know, it's just brilliant. And not having to worry about cables in shot because there aren't any cables. And it's just changing the way that I can work. And it just, you can tell I'm excited about it. It's just, it's wonderful. And it's great to be able to use the technology.